against something like this, because people are either walking the dog or out in the garden or doing whatever, and they don't have time to thought. But this evening's gathering tells me the opposite, that so many people bothered to come and showed their interest in coming this evening to something that is very special. And it is very special because the artist Lula Holloway is one of our own, a local girl, who was educated across the street by the Mercy nuns. Now I want to tell a little story first of all. A few weeks ago, a beautiful woman and a young man came to my door. And the young man wanted to know something about the Quaker Cemetery. And I told him what I knew about it, or the sources where he might find something else about it. And I thought to myself, well, there must be a brother and sister. I didn't know who they were, to be quite honest. And then, uh, yes, you have guessed, the glamorous lady was Lula. And she told me, of course, who she was. I had never really met her before, though I did no offer. But you can imagine my shock, surprise, at knowing that she was the mother of the young man. <laughs> so at her birth, the gods were indeed very bountiful. And they gave her not her own beauty, a luminous, wonderful beauty, but also talent. She has been an actress and a model, as we know. And incidentally, I only learned this very afternoon that she was stand-in for, for, for what was her name? Leslie Andown. Leslie Andown. Leslie Andown. Leslie Andown. Uh, in the Great Train Robbery, was it in 1978? Yes. Something like that. Uh, well, it was partly filmed here at a motor station, a railway station. That is to say, when the railway station was visually beautiful and filmable, something that it is not today. Um, now, um, what do I say else about, about Nuna? Well, she is an artist as well, as well as having been an actress and a model. She is an artist too, and she tells me that she really took up art shortly after leaving school. I didn't know quite when she had started. And here to officially launch this wonderful collection that we have all been admiring this evening, uh, aptly named Inspirations, is the prestigious artist Don Conroy. Now, Don is, I am sure, a household name in Ireland. Uh, that is in his TV work. And we are extremely fortunate indeed to have someone of his caliber here this evening to launch this exhibition. A few little things I found out about him. Uh, <laughs> that he is a writer of children's books, uh, that he has had a, a program on TV, Art for Children, called Draw with Don, and now I believe it is called The Den. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And also that he is, to my surprise, that he is an actor and a director as well. Indeed, he is a man of many parts. 
Uh, he mostly, uh, I think, specializes in wildlife art, is that right? And I asked Anula, I asked, what uh, medium did you use? And she said, watch and oils and a mixture of things, pen and ink and all that stuff. Like so really, we are absolutely delighted to have somebody like Don to launch this magnificent exhibition. I think it is a first for both of them. It's a first for Anula back in her native boat. It's a first for Don here with us in Turan. And we are delighted indeed, and the management wants to say, Kid, be the fortune to Don, and put your hands together and give a very big pool of us to Don. Thank you very much. Uh, I think she deserves a lot of special number of applause. <laughs> well, I'm absolutely delighted to be here, and it's a lovely space for an exhibition. And how appropriate uh, that Nula should be shown her very first exhibition uh, in our own hometown. I think that's very special. And it's great to see so many people coming here tonight to support her. Uh, I hope in many ways. <laughs> now first of all I want to tell you uh, a little bit, if I may, about art. Um, most people, you know, have walls in the house and they like to put things on the wall. And usually prints uh, suffice because you're going to roast the sores or whatever, you get nice prints. But there is something very special about an original, a once-off. And anybody who has taken any kind of interest in art over the years, uh, when you go in to a gallery, and especially seeing one of your favorite pictures, or discovering a picture that becomes your favorite picture, there's a certain magic. And I was saying this earlier to the children over in the school, between the subject and the object, so that there's a kind of a, a silent dialogue that takes place. There's a special connection. And to cherish a painting is like cherishing a friend. And certain pictures, you know, you will always hold this memory through your life of them. And sometimes paintings you only see in magazines or books or art books, and then to see them in real life they're so uh, exciting. And Beethoven said that art should touch at heaven's gates. And there's a great story about him. He was in the woods one day and in Vienna. And he was wandering around the woods. And two artists came in and they saw Beethoven. They said, oh, Beethoven, how are you? And he says, fine, fine, fine. And they said, what are you doing in the woods? And he says, well, I've come here for inspiration. And he said, but you're a composer, <laughs> you know, why would you be here? We're artists, we're here because, you know, we can see the lovely trees now, but we can't understand why you're here. And he says, well, if you can't understand why I'm here, then you're not artists. <laughs> so, um, we all need to open out to the world. And for most of us, we go through life sleepwalking. And it's very important. And the artists, have always tried down through history to open our eyes. They've become a window uh, not only to the beauty of nature or whatever it may be, but also to our inner selves. So true art uh, is an outward journey of an inward search. And the more we explore uh, our creative selves, and it can be just to appreciate something, or it can be to paint, or to write, or whatever it may be. Uh, all these things are so important to us. And to think that people have been painting pictures for over 35,000 years uh, is quite amazing, and they're still doing it today. Now, Nula here has shown such a range uh, of subject matter, and such a range of medium. Like, for instance, it is, some people can be very good at acrylics. They can be very poor at watercolors. Some people are very good at pencil, very good at oil, uh, very poor at oils. So to be able to kind of master such a range is extremely uh, good and dedicated because it takes an awful lot of work. And like anything, everybody feels they they know about art and they have you know a sort of in a sense a right to criticize art. But I always feel the true critics of artists should be artists themselves. Because 
really only artists know what it's like to really get in there and work and build something up and try to hold a vision. And, and so I look around and all these pictures have such enthusiasm in them. And that to me is very important. They're, they're all beaming at you. And it's lovely to see, you know, the celebration of them good self sitting over there uh, on the wall here. And it's a really, and it's an excellent study of Leo. Leo, yeah. <laughs> well done. And I think he deserves a, a very big round of applause, that gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, not only a joy to see an expert, but the very fact that you have your own uh, historian here as well, uh, preserving wonderful memories and being able to look again with a creative eye and get us to look at things in a very fresh way. Uh, I had this experience in Sligo about five years ago. I was up in a place called Riverstown and there was a festival on, a music festival, and I was asked up to do workshops for the children just to add another dimension to the festival. So I was delighted to be up there. And this lovely old man walked up to me, he was about 80, and he said to me, uh, um, God bless your hands. He said, bless Thank you very much. It's very nice thing to say. And he said, I saw you with the children. And was chatting away. And then he said to me, would you like me to sing your song? <laughs> Please, yeah. <laughs> he stood right beside me now. And he sang me the most beautiful love song about this girl, you know. <laughs> And you know something, as he sang the song, his eyes became young. And he had this absolutely beautiful glow from him. And I really, I felt so privileged just to be, to be there to experience that, you know. And you know that total, you know the way people are so sophisticated nowadays, so cool and they would never let the guard down, keep the mask on. He was such an open person. And really and truly, that's what, that's what the artist is trying to do. That's what Lou is trying to do. She's trying to show her inner self as well, her own inner beauty, and I know she has plenty of that. That's in abundance. Lou has a total advantage over the rest of us artists. She has it every way. Looks, <laughs> you know, and she can paint. Uh, so she can be a muse, <laughs> and she can be the artist. Great. I'm afraid that doesn't work with But listen, uh, I want everybody tonight to go and enjoy the pictures very much. And anybody is feeling uh, like they want to part with money. <laughs> Remember the artist doesn't live on pressure. <laughs> yeah. And again, a lovely range of pictures uh, and some lovely lighting in, in the background and that. And remember each picture you know, has been worked on as a unique picture in its own right. They're all together there and sometimes pictures compete with each other when they're on the wall. But uh, when you like something, bring it off to your own place. And I also remember, if you do have pictures in the house, one little trick to remember is to move them around. Because when you move around paintings, you see them with fresh eyes again. That's what you're going to take them for granted. Uh, so again, uh, just a little bit uh, from a personal point of view, about Nola and myself. <laughs> so we're <only> quite all right. <laughs> <That's what they're... laughs> I know, uh, I know Lula, Lula from a long time, and and she's, uh, I say, she's a trailblazer. You know, she made everybody alive pop out in, in the early days, thrown off her beauty, <laughs> which is terrific. Uh, but this was not only her, you know, natural, who has been naturally beautiful. But also, this was her own creative side as well, which people don't realize, you know, so it's expressed oneself creatively. It's almost like a dancer. And then some people ask me about paintings. What's the difference between a nude and a naked, you know, painting? You know, sometimes you go to a gallery and see some people not clothes on. <laughs> uh, the thing is that a nude, which is uh, paintings that have been traditionally done for thousands of years, the nude represents the energy and beauty that's in a woman. There's nothing self-conscious or self-facing about it, you know. Whereas to show somebody naked, then they're kind of victims. 
And that's why some of these terribly tragic pictures that you see, you know, from the concentration and all these poor native, you know, victims. But it's not to do with the celebration of the human form. And that's what artists have always tried to do in Entropy Ages. Uh, of course, photographers have surpassed them in some ways because it's more immediate and they can produce all kinds of things. But it's all about creativity. So Nula was a fantastic model representing Ireland. She was a very fine actress. We, Dermot Linsky, who's a brilliant actor, he was here tonight. Uh, we were in Milwaukee and we were doing uh, Yates plays and I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to direct them. So not only was I playing a few small parts in the plays, but I got a chance to direct Dermot and Nula. And honestly, it was spellbinding. People came after us and said, you know, they were so moved by these plays. And Nula looked like a Celtic goddess. <laughs> and Dermot was the great tragic uh, Kukul and all his white hair and his beards and it was fantastic. So there's so many facets and aspects to Nula, and it's a bit like it's a bit like looking at something a different way. It's like you keep turning and you see a different a different side and different facet. And I think that is it's shine of a very creative person. In, in every sense of the word, and I congratulate you, Nula, and I hope it's a great success, and well done. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for coming here, taking the trouble, as Don said, to come out here this evening. I'm sure you had other things to do. But uh, there's one person here I want to say a particular welcome to, and that is Leo. Leo Daly has not been well uh, recently, and he's come here tonight to be, uh, he's determined to be here. And I have to thank his nurse. Uh, he's picked one of the best looking nurses in St. Clair's to come because Leo has an eye for the women. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to say that, Leo. And I want He's to not thank denying it. <laughs> <laughs> and also I want to thank uh, Turard and Maura and all our team. Uh, Veronica, Katrina is not here, but Mary and so many more who helped to put this behind uh, hang this exhibition. Uh, I was amazed at the way Maura was able to go up and down the, that ladder that day that we came down the paintings at such speed and put all of the work up and so beautifully done. And I also want to thank my own family and my husband Jerome for bringing the, all the paintings for me down here. It's quite a job to bring so many. And especially to my son Ivor. Ivor has been a wonderful help to me in, in many ways. So I thank him as well. So there's nothing more. Thank you again, and I hope you enjoy my work. Thank you.